Good day everyone. Welcome to our discussion about physical science and I am your teacher for physical science for this semester. I am Mr. Mark Anthony Laroya. So, ang hawak kong subject ng physical science ay para sa mga grade 12 students ng IATI College of Science and Technology, San Pedro Laguna Campus. Okay? So, I will be discussing for today the first topic in physical science. No? So, first, we discuss about the two major branches of science. Those are physical science and biological science. Now, so biological science pertains to the science that deals with the study of life. Kaya nga siya tinawag na biological science. Biology, bio, like the term biodata, information about life. So when we say biological science pertains to the study of life. Now, Physical science, and by the way, is also known as natural science. So, yung mga content ng physical science, mamaya isa-isahin ko, no? Buta muna tayo sa biological science. Last school year, when you were still in grade 11, nagkaroon kayo ng subject na uh, Earth and Life Science. We're in, during the finals, doon tinala kayo ang mga uh, everything about life science or biological science. So, hindi na natin siya tatalakay ngayon kasi nga physical science lang tayo. Now, when it comes to physical science, ito naman po yung mga coverage ng physical science. It is actually pertains to different uh, inanimate natural science like chemistry, physics, and earth science. So, ibig sabihin, kabilang pa rin po sa physical science ang earth science. However, for this semester, hindi ko na po siya tatalakayin because as I've said, you're, you are already done with your earth science in your earth and life science subject when you were in grade 11. So, these are the coverage ng ating subject na physical science for the entire semester. I will be discussing the two major branches of science, the chemistry and physics. So, for chemistry and physics, by the way, you will be needing periodic tables, a periodic table of elements as well as calculators because there will be some computations that might be involved in the discussion of chemistry as well as lalong-lalo na pagdating natin sa physics. So, ito lang po ay introduction about physical science. Pinapakilala ko lang sa inyo ano yung mga bagay-bagay na pag-uusapan natin sa physical science. So, let us now proceed with the coverage ng mga uh, branches of science na i-discuss natin sa physical science. So, for example, we have here chemistry that for the entire midterm, I will be discussing concepts uh, uh, concepts of chemistry wherein ang unang-unang i-discuss ko ay the origin of elements. So, saan ba nanggaling ang mga elements? Paano ba sila nabuo? Okay? So, you, this will be my very first topic sa physical science. And then, followed by the periodic table of elements. We will be studying the structure of the periodic table of elements wherein i-explain natin bakit kaya ganun ang structure ng periodic table of elements. Bakit hindi na lang natin siya gawing purely rectangle or rectangle, square, bakit hindi na lang siya gawing alphabetically ordered. No? So, there are logical reasons bakit ganun ang structure, bakit irregular ang shape ng periodic table of elements as well as we will be studying the properties and characteristics of the elements and also in chemistry we will be dealing with chemical substances and their properties so specifically pag-uusapan natin ang concept of matter the classifications of matter pure substances and mixtures as well as paano ba nabubuo ang isang compound so from element turning into compound and so on. We will also be studying the naming of chemical compounds as well as their chemical formulas. At pag-usapan din natin yung chemical reaction and balancing. Okay? Now, lahat ng topic na ito sa chemistry will be discussed for the entire midterm and hopefully matapos nga natin siya. Okay? Now, when it comes naman sa finals, pagdating ng finals, we will be discussing the subject physics wherein we will be dealing with topics such as motion, linear motion specifically. So, magpo-focus lang tayo sa linear motion. And then followed by the concept of force, 
marami tayong klase ng force, contact force and non-contact force, as well as gravitational force, mga ganong topic. Isasama rin natin yan sa ating topic sa physics sa finals. And then, followed by the topic about work. So, work. And then lastly, we have the concept of energy. Hopefully, madiscuss natin lahat or ma-cover natin lahat ng topic na ito for the entire semester. Okay? So, these are the topics that I will be discussing. So, you may do advanced reading, advanced study, or you may study on your own para makapaghanda kayo sa mga discussions natin later on. Okay? So, this time, I will now be discussing the origin of Elements. So, saan ba nagmula ang elements? Saan ba nagmula ang hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, even sodium, at kung ano-ano pa mga elements that you can see in the periodic table of elements. So, there is a, a uh, history about the origin of elements. So, the history or the origin of elements began with this what we call the Big Bang, or yung tatawag natin Big Bang Theory. So, ano ba nangyari nung Big Bang Theory? So, it all started with a single small particle, single small particle, like they say, it's just like a dot, that simply, it exploded and it released high amount of energy. And at the same time, producing up, while producing uh, high amount of energy, there was also an extremely high temperature. So, napakainit at napakalakas na energy ang nabuo or uh, ang naproduce during the Big Bang explosion. So, while there was a Big Bang, do nag-start pagkaroon ng formation ng universe and at the same time, nagsimula ang expansion ng universe. Now, you, the concept about the expansion of universe is what we call the cosmic inflation, wherein nag-start mag-expand or lumalaki ang space ng ating universe or yung volume ng universe continuously. And the scientists even say that up to now, nag expand pa rin daw ang universe. But as it expands, it also started to cool down. Pero hindi ganun kabilis yung rate ng pag-cool down ng universe. Now, during Big Bang, dahil siya nga yung nag-release ng high amount of energy and extremely high temperature, nagkalat sa space ang tinatawag natin mga nucleons. So, these nucleons are pre-existing subatomic particles, specifically the protons, and the neutrons. Now, we have this what we call nucleosynthesis. So, when we say nucleosynthesis, it is the process that creates new atomic nucleus from pre-existing nucleons, primarily the protons and the neutrons. So, nagsimula nga to sa mga nagkalat na subatomic particles like protons and neutrons. So, involved dito yung dalawang subatomic particles na tinatawag nating nucleons. And then, these nucleons are protons and uh, neutrons na eventually, nung nabuo ang mga elements or atoms, sila yung makikita natin sa tinatawag na nucleus. Now, during the process of nucleons, nagkaroon kasi ito ng collision between the subatomic particles or between the nucleons, no? so the protons and neutrons. Now, for the first three minutes after the Big Bang, ito ang mga naganap. So, the first one is, ang nangyari, because of high energy and temperature, randomly habang gumagalawa mga subatomic particles like protons and neutrons, nagkakaroon ng time that they collided. So, protons and neutrons, when they collide, they combine, and they form the very first element in the universe. At ito po ang tiyatawag nating hydrogen. So, hydrogen was the first element formed in the universe composed of a proton and a neutron. By the way, proton is the one that we uh, count sa mga elements to identify ano ang element na ito. So, what do I mean by that? For example, ang hydrogen, 
is an atom or element with one proton. Therefore, if an element has more than one proton, hindi mo siya pwedeng tawagin hydrogen. Kasi kapag hydrogen, dapat isa lang ang proton. At ito ang nagsasabi, or ito yung tutukoy sa atomic number sa periodic table of elements. For example, let's say we have carbon, which has an atomic number of 6. So the atomic number 6 of carbon tells us that carbon has 6 protons. So the number of protons tell us at it identifies ano yung element meron tayo or nag exist And again, for example, sodium. Sodium has an atomic number of 11. It's because sodium has 11 protons. So going back here, when proton, when a proton combined with a neutron, it formed a what we call hydrogen atom or element. And specifically, since dalawang subatomic particles ang nag-combine, ito po ay tinatawag natin na deuterium hydrogen or deuterium atom of hydrogen. Deuterium composed of one proton and one neutron. Now, there were also times wherein the collision is between a proton and two neutrons. So, what happened here is, when these three subatomic particles combined, collided, ito po ang nabuo natin. There are two neutrons and one proton. Since this is an element with one proton, still, the name of this element is still hydrogen. So, hydrogen pa rin po siya. Kasi, siya po ay isang element or atom with one proton. And as I said, kapag one ang proton, it's only hydrogen atom. So, we form here this what we call a tritium atom of hydrogen or simply tritium. Okay? So, pareho silang hydrogen. However, ang pinagkaiba lang, ang pinagkaiba lang nila, deuterium hydrogen has one neutron while tritium hydrogen has two neutrons. Now, they are elements of the same kind. Ang tawag po natin dito ay isotopes. So when we say and uh, they, when we say isotopes, they are atoms or elements of the same kind. The only difference is their number of neutrons. So in this case, deuterium hydrogen is an isotope of hydrogen and tritium is also an isotope of hydrogen because they are both hydrogen. They are atom atoms of the same kind, hydrogen. They just have difference in the number of neutrons. For deuterium, there's only one neutron. For tritium, there are two neutrons. So that is what we call isotopes.